all right guys what is going on today sunday august 16th um this is actually my fourth attempt to make the video today just keep on getting disturbed meanwhile so we're going to start over fresh today sunday on the channel we read jewish stories on the channel now also besides music if anybody knows what's going on and uh sundays we read safer which is a breslov safer um oral history of breslov Stories about Rabbi Nachman, stories about Rav Nassim, stories about all the other chassidim. A lot of interesting information here. It's eight volumes. Um, and we're, we started reading a few weeks ago, a month and a half ago, two months ago. We started reading Chelek Beis. And we're up to piece 198. Kuf Tzadik Ches. And uh, this is the first story today. is about a journey to Uman. Rabbi Abba's journey to Uman. It's also 33 days, th 34 days to Rosh Hashanah and Uman this year. We don't know what's going to be. It's still unclear. Let's keep on davening. So yeah, well, since I already read the story four times in the last 20 minutes, I'm going to try to read it again as clear as can be, thank God. So, this story takes place in one of the years that Rabbi Nachman lived in the city of Breslov. Okay, Rabbi Nachman lived most of his life in the city of Breslov. That's where the Breslov Jesus, we have our name from there. And at that time, when the Chassidim would gather to, for two Rabbi Nachman for Rosh Hashanah, they didn't go to Uman because he didn't live there, obviously. They went to Brussels. He only was in Uman for the last six months of his life. And the first Rosh Hashanah in Uman was that was his, was Rabbi Nachman's last Rosh Hashanah. So, in this story, Rabbi Nachman was living in Brussels and Rosh Hashanah was going to be on Monday, Tuesday. That means Rosh Hashanah starts Sunday night. And the chassidim from the city of Chirin, which is a little far away from, um, from sorry, from Breslov, they decided that they wanted to go already to Breslov for Shabbos. So that on Mighty Shabbos, they would already be able to be in Breslov for Rosh Hashanah. And they, and they would also be able to say Slichos for Erev Rosh Hashanah, Zichor Breslichos, which is a big deal in Breslov. They were going to be able to say that with Rabbi Nachman. But there was one of their, one of their guys, Rabbi Abba, the Shaykhit of Chirin. He did not go with them for certain reasons, but he also attempted also to try to make it, I guess he left a few hours after them, he also tried to make it to go to Bresla for Shabbos, but he didn't have time and he only made it to Uman. Uman was also a city on the way to Bresla. And Rabbi Nachman wasn't living there yet, obviously, like we just said, but he spent Shabbos in Uman. There were Jews living there, of course. There was other people living there. And he went and he spent Shabbos in Uman. And on Mighty Shabbos, he had still about 100 kilometers to go till he got to the city of Breslov. And that was going to be very hard uh, because it started raining like cats and dogs on Mighty Shabbos. And the roads were getting all muddy and it was very hard for the wagons to go. And he realized that he was going to have a very, very hard time. He may not make it to Breslov for Shabbos. So he went around to all these wagon drivers there. And he tried to convince them to take him to Breslov. And none of them wanted to go. They were like, do this weather no way until he begged and begged and begged and then and then and then one of the bottle and then one of the wagon drivers said fine if you give me 13 rubles which is a very large amount of money for anybody and especially for a guy like Rabbi Abu who was also very poor he didn't even have clothes to change into for Shabbos that's how that's how poor he was um he said, if you give me 13 rubles, I will take you. And Rabbi, and Rabbi Abba said, Yala, done, let's go. And right after they decided to do that, the wagon driver saw the weather and he was like, you know what, it's a little intense out there, maybe we could go back on the deal. But the other wagon driver said, listen, we already said no, but you said yes and you promised him, so now you have to take him. So they said, fine. So they went and they were going the whole night and the journey was very hard. And in the morning, they were only get able to get to the city of Teplik which was about 35 kilometers from Uman. So they were about 70 kilometers still away from Brussels, right? They took a break there. Tapalik, the wagon driver, fed the horses, gave them to drink. They rested a little bit, and they kept on going. And in, by the Tsarayim, they were able to get the Kreshi Rav also with very, with very big difficulties. They were only able to get to the city of Heisen. Heisen was about 30 kilometers from Breslov. And at that point, the wagon driver was ready to give up, and he was like, Yalla, I can't do this anymore. It's too much for the horses, too much for me, I'm too tired, we can't go. Let's stay here for Rosh Hashanah. 
Rabbi Abba said, "No way. We have to. We 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 have to make it to Brasov." So the wagon driver said, "Okay," and he left. He fed the horses again, whatever, and he left. And it was getting very late in the day, and the bowl and the wagon driver started screaming at the horses. He said to him, they, "He said to them in Yiddish, Kinderloch zum Rebbe.'" Kids, we have to go to the Rebbe. Like telling the horses, "Yalla, we have to go. Move faster." And the horses started galloping so fast, Shaloi Kider Chateva. Like it was, it was not like a normal speed. They were going super fast, and they were able to get to Breslov. Thank God, at the time that the that the Oilam over there was already davening Mincha of Erev Roshana, and he made it. Now he had to give the wagon driver thirteen rubles, which he did not have. So what did he give him instead? He gave him a special silver Kiddush cup that he had got for Rabbi Nachman as a gift for the Rebbe. And he had to give it to him because he didn't have any, he didn't have money, 13 rubles, but he had the silver cup. So he traded and the wagon driver said, fine. So now, at the night meal, they were sitting around and Rabbeinu would sit there at the Shulchan and all the Chesidim would eat and everything like that. And Rabbeinu also, his minute was in Rosh Hashanah, he, he, he would not eat. I mean, sorry, he would not talk at all. But he went out this time, out of his way, out of his minute to to, to um, not talk, and he turned to and he turned to the sky, Rabbi Abba the Sheikh, and he said to him, "Abba, tell us your story of how you got here." And Rabbi Abba was very scared to say it because he knew that he would have to tell Rabbeinu that he gave away his kiddush cup. And he said again, "Abba, don't be scared. Tell us your story of how you got here." And Rabbi Abba said the whole story of how he had to give the kiddush cup and this and that and all that. And when he finished, Rabinu says, because of this cup that you gave to the wagon driver to get to me for Shana, I am able, I can take out the eyes and the teeth of the Baldavar, of the Yitzhar, of the Satan. What you did for me was so great that I am now able to accomplish this. And then he said to Rabbi Abba, this world is already not Kedai for you, and he said to Shmuel, who was his son, we'll see in a second, Rabbi, who was Rabbi Abba's son, take a little bit of the soup. What does that mean? It says over here that Rabbi Abba's son, Rabbi Shmuel, also came with him. And what Rabbeinu was trying to tell everybody there was that Rabbi Abba was meant to die now. He was, he was so holy for this world. It wasn't, it wasn't he died from the state in this world, so he died after Sukkot. And his son, Rabbi Shmuel, Got very rich. That's what that's what Rabbi Nachman meant when he said take a little bit of soup. He was giving him a bracha for Ashiras. And his son sorry, and and, and there then and then it continues and it says that th- uh, there was another guy, Rabbi Abala, who was another chassid later on, who 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 was Yorish all this money from Rabbi Shmuel. So from this story with the cup and this thing he accomplished a whole bunch of things, destroying the Itahara, weakening the Itahara. Rabbi Shmuel having a lot of money, Rabbi Shmuel giving him a bracha. Very cool. Um, the next story I try to read, I don't understand it, so we're going to skip it. But let's go to Reish. So, Reish. By the Chasana of Miriam, who was the son of Rabbi Nachman, who's actually buried here in Tzvas Irakoidish. She's buried in the cave with the Basayan. And she got married to the Ben Harav Mivolchstik. And a lot of tzaddikim and rabbanim came to this wedding. Um, and on Arab Shabbos, Rabbeinu said to Rab Nassim that he should go to the mikvah lichvay Shabbos. And he said to him, "But you should be careful that you don't switch your clothing there. That your that your that your clothing doesn't get mixed up from all the lachats and pressure that's there because there were so many people in the mikvah. All these people were there for Shabbos." Um, because Rab Nassim already had made up in his mind that he's not going to go to the mikvah to, to dip again because in the morning he already dipped on Friday morning. And he didn't want to go there because maybe his clothing was going to get switched. And he said to and he said to Rabbi Nachman, I already toiled in the morning. And Rabbi Nachman says, I want you to go toivel again. Just be careful that your clothes don't get switched. Simple, good advice. Rabbeinu Rabbeinu used to say a lot of the tefillahs that were in the Sefer Shari Tzion, like it says in Sikh Saran. Um, and in Uman, one of the Chesidim had the Sefer Shari Tzion of Rabbi Nachman, and a lot of it was erased because of all the tears that Rabbi Nachman cried when he used to say those tefillahs. 
On Shmini Atzeres, Rabbeinu was noyeg to make a special meal tish for the Bali Batim, for the people who worked for the for the for the Bali Batish guys, and the and the Chsidim were not allowed to come to this meal. And the min this minig was also from the Baal Shem Tov. He could do that. The Baal Shem Tov also, Shmini Atzeres, he would only have a meal with like the simpletons and all those, and the Chsidim would be like, what's going on? But this is what they did. And after the and after they and after this meal, Kishahochu, after everybody went for Tefilas Arvis of Simchas Torah, right? Shmini Atzeres and then Simchas Torah. So Lachu Valibu Bali Batim, the Bali Batim would walk with with they would walk with Rabbi Nachman to the base of Knesses with a a chuppah on top of him, um, like the way that they would uh, walk with these big Rabbanim Hagdoylim. And they would sing and dance, and then the chassidim would come, and everybody would be really happy. So it was a big joyous occasion. When Rav Nassin was getting close to Rabbeinu, Shekegedua his gabra az all of his nadas atzu mitzabe mipnei mishpachtei. So that when it, uh, uh, it's already known, and we know, and maybe people who are watching this video don't know, but it's known that when Rav Nassin was getting close to Rabbeinu. He had a lot of tsaras from his family who was very against him because they were litfish. They were extremely against him coming close to Rabbi Nachman and he had a, and he had a lot of maniyas from them. He almost lost his wife and everything. There's a whole story about it. Um, and he came to and he was having a lot of and he was having a lot of tsar from them. And he came to Rabbi Nachman in the middle of the week of Parshas Noyach. Even though his family was in the snagged against him from coming, he still went. And Rabbi Nu says he says, you have to say Shalom Aleichem to me and then also go, Salah Shalom. That, so, 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 so that the Machlekes shouldn't get worse. But as also, and also Rabbeinu said to him at that time, a man needs to pull on to himself to go after the truth, always to go after the truth, Belidrash, Belachar, Heichanhu, Becholz, Oisemes. Where does he stand in all this Truth, like what's his place? So he's telling him nothing to think about everything. Okay. They say over that one of the times that the Machlekes was on Rabbeinu, there was also a time, obviously, when the Machlekes was also on Rabbeinu. Besides Rav Nassim, before Rav Nassim, whatever, it was a very, very big Machlekes on Rabbeinu for much of his life when he was Um So one time, one of these Machutzov from these Cholkim, from these Misnagdim. Um, he wanted to go into Rabbeinu and to hurt him. And when he went into Ra- and he, when he went in, Rabbeinu. Um, and when he came in, Rabbeinu was standing with his face to the wall, and Rabbeinu stuck his hand behind him and he said, "Okay, you want to hurt me? So here, hurt me. Do what you want." And there's Deus, Eitz Al Nash. There's other people that say, "What? What? Um, and what? And they're saying, what happened to this guy?" There's different. Things that the chassidim say. Yeh shoyim rum shinema bim bim that he stood in his place. The loy hoyo yuchyach alas is klum me roiv hapachid shinaf alav. He wasn't able to do anything because of the roiv hapachid that he had from seeing Rabbeinu. That Rabbeinu knew what he was going to do to him. And other people say that he turned deaf, couldn't talk. And other people say that he died shortly after. You should definitely not mess with Rabbi Nachman. Kamoi Cain, another story. Misafrim Shempam Baal Rabbeinu Gedidu Menurav Shalomad Yachad Imoi Bekatnusai. One time, an old friend from when Rabbeinu was a little kid came to Rabbeinu when when he was now Rabbeinu. Um, and when he came, and before he went into Rabbeinu, he was thinking in his head um, that when he that that. That when he was going to go into Rabbeinu, he would give him like his handshake, like he did when he was a little kid, like you know, squeeze his hand. Like, oh, we learned together in school, and we know each other. You know, like kids do; they shake their hands, they squeeze, they squeeze each other's hands hard. And when he went to Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu again stood with his face to the wall, and Rabbeinu turned to him betzachas and says, without even seeing who entered, "Kachas yadi udam alt al He said, "Take my hand, but don't squeeze it." And he was very embarrassed. Menafal Allah Pachan Gadol Me Rabinu. 
and then he was very scared of Rabin because Rabin knew who it was even though he didn't see him he knew what he wanted to do him that's because Rabin was very holy um, one time they say that a man came into Rabin whose name was David who also knew him from his from the child um, and he said before he goes into Rabin also he's going to kiss Rabin because we know each other from the kids same type of story as the last story with the hands Rabin who says Rabbein who said to him when he walked in, the passage from Tehillim, she going with David, I'll divrei kush. Kush is like kiss. Bilaz, when he said he wanted to kiss him, Bilaz, it says over here, kush with a cuff. And it says over here in Tehillim, kush with a cuff. And Rabbeinu was saying to him, I guess, don't do this. And Vinasim is sugar, Rahman al And the guy became a sugar who wanted to kiss Rabbeinu. Okay. When Rabbeinu one time praised Rabbi Mendel, who was nicknamed Rav Mendel Mikfar, Rav Mendel from the village, Omar he said, Rav Mendel is my medallion, Shildi. The last Mandel. I guess that's medallion, med- Mendel, medallion, like my, he's like my favorite. Good stuff. One time, Shibach Pam is Rabbi Shaya Shalim Benoy Shal Rabbi Yudol. I don't know who that is. Oh, one time I guess Rabbeinu praised Rabbi Shaya Shalom, who is the son of Rabbi Yudol. Omar and he says, Hu halach lichu He's going to the chup- he's going to the chuppah with a clean shirt, like he's clean from sin. Pam, one time in one of his journeys, Rabbeinu was by Rabbi Shua Mizashirin was a student and when he came back from his journey he praised him and he says I was by my my I was by my Yeshua in the Shirin and I saw that he daven a piece of mincha a shtick mincha he liked the way he davened what are we up to over here alright we'll do one more page Pam biyos Rabbeinu Tinek when when Rabbeinu was a baby, <coughs> Rab uh, Rabbi Nachman's mother Fega had to travel from her house, and she asked from the Rav Hatzadik Rav Chaim Krasner to watch the child. Kishchazra, when she returned, Amar Lo Rabbi Chaim, you can imagine for yourself that I watched him very well. Like you should know that I watched him very well. That I didn't even get up for chatzos. To do it, so that I wouldn't wake up the baby by by mistake. Wow! Then I, this guy got to watch Rabinu when he was a baby. He was, he was his babysitter. One time when Rabinu was in Ladizin, after 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 he was already living in Breslov, he went on Lel Shabbos Kodesh Lesimcha Shalom Zacher. That was by he went to a Shalom Zacher by by that was by one of the Chassidim in Ladizin, and. Some of the people that were there, the Chazan came. The Chazan came. Biyash from Kach B'Shulchan, who's sitting by the table. So, Bikesh Baal Simcha Me'a Chazan, the Baal Simcha asked him the Chazan that he should sing a song for the Shalom Zach or whatever. And he said, this chazan was misnagi to Rabbi Nachman, and he says, she ain't like kol no case, I don't have a good voice to sing now. And Rabbeinu says, ani kvar etin like kol shalo yafsik. Ichvel im shoin gebin a kol the delay pasach. I'm going to give you a voice that won't stop. What does that mean? The em tzeshu in the middle of the week, kishegi es bris mila, when the time of the bris mila came, loy ba chazan the suda sabris, the chazan did not come to the suda sabris, and the Bnei Simcha went to look from his house. And they said, and the people in the house of the Chazan said to him that they don't know where he went because he already left from the house. And they said that he went to the Brasmila. And they went and looked for him and they found him being Oiver and Avera Rahman al Um I guess like a bad, really bad Avera. I think it says in other Svarim that he was, he was some with a woman or something. 
And now everybody, I guess that this coil, meaning like the voice, like everybody knows that this guy is a sinner. So yeah, that's pretty... Like these last two pages are like, don't mess with Rabbi Nachman because he knows what's going on. Kiduwa <coughs> known. This is also a little hard to understand this one, but Rabbeinu wasn't in regards to playing with children. He wasn't so into it. Like it says in Sikh Saran. Um, I guess he, he, he was not into um, giving a patch, giving hits to kids. I'm not sure what's going on over here, but that's basically what I that's basically what I know. Rabbi was not into hitting kids, Hashem, but he also was not so into he said to not play with kids so much. I guess your kids or whatever. Let them do their own thing sometimes too. Which is also good advice too. Let's do two more pieces, three three more pieces. When Rabbeinu was by the Rav Kodesh Miladi, Rashmir Zalman of Ladi, the Baatanya. The Rav, he asked the Rav, is it true what they say, that you have 80,000 chassidim? And the Balatani said to him, Yeshi harbe chassidim milamde tinoikis vayeladim noisim prutis tzedaka b'chukupas ha tzedaka shli mistalma kishidu lo yikachlechu alai. Because I have a lot of chassidim who teach children, and the children give prutis tzedaka in my kupois of tzedakah that I gave them, that they won't be chayel for me. I don't know what the answer has to do with what Rabbeinu asked him. But that's what he answered him. It says over here that all the time the machlekes against Rabbeinu, the Balatanya was on Rabbeinu's side. If chinu an nash be Rabbeinu, shayim misalim atas peyosev lefnei shayel The nash saw that Rabbeinu, before he left the house, he would set up his peyas a little bit. I also sometimes set up my payas a little bit when I leave the house. It's a good thing to do. Pam b'lag ba'emer amar rabbeinu. One time b'lag ba'emer rabbeinu says, "In Meron they're happy, but it could be that rabbeinu, that Rabbi Shimon, is actually here." I guess that was in Brass of Ruman, but yeah, that's also big stuff. Tadikim everywhere. That's the video for today. And uh, everyone should have a great day, great week.